in this video we are going to start with the functions topic now this topic is very 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 interesting and it will make your life very easy so functions are kind of favorite thing of a programmer so in this topic or in this video we are going to see where exactly in our day to day life we use functions so i'm going to tell you one real life example about the indian weddings and by that example we are going to understand what exactly are the functions and how the function makes our life easy now as a programmer we always use functions so that's why this topic is very 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 important uh, in the placement interviews placement interviewer will always see how you write your code with the help of functions so that's why i am again saying this topic is going to be very very important yes so let's now talk about the indian weddings indian weddings is a crazy ceremony it involves whole lot of stuff you can see on my screen i have attached few images from the indian weddings and it's really a crazy and very big ceremony now let's take an example let's say i am going to get married and i want to host a party like this i want to host my wedding ceremony like this so who will be responsible for handling this entire stuff so ideally or usually this happens in indian weddings so ideally the groom's uh, dad will be responsible for handling the entire ceremony so in my case my dad will be responsible for organizing the entire wedding ceremony now if my dad wants to plan this entire stuff then it will be very hectic for him we can classify four important chunks of the indian wedding ceremony so the first chunk is decoration decoration is very important for the wedding right then the second stuff is music and entertainment you will be having multiple guests many guests so you can't keep them always sitting on chairs and just watching uh, your wedding so there should be some music and entertainment that's why there is going to be music and entertainment as well in the in the wedding then you will be having multiple guests so you need to handle them as well you need to receive them properly you will you will have to give them uh, proper treatment so that they will be happy and they will share good vibes in your wedding so that is also one important area of the wedding and the next and the most important thing about the indian weddings is food and drink so in india weddings are called success if the food and drinks are proper if the food and drinks arrangement is not good then people will blame you at your back about your wedding okay doesn't matter how much decoration how much good entertainment and music you have the best thing that you should have is going to going to be food and drinks so these are the four important categories that are going to play a crucial role in wedding right now let's say this is an organizer who has the responsibility of managing an entire wedding entire wedding ceremony now let's think from his perspective it's going to be very 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 difficult for him to manage the entire wedding because this wedding is going to be huge and there are four different multiple chunks involved in this wedding it's going to be confusing for him sometimes so let's let's say there are going to be some decoration guys who are going to do some decoration they are calling him again some music guys are also calling him then some food arrangement uh, makers are also calling him so it may cause confusion sometime maybe he will talk about decoration with the food guys and maybe he can talk about music with decoration guys so it may happen right and for a single person to handle all this stuff it's going to be very difficult and very confusing and it's going to be mess so that's why as a good organizer what he can do is he can distribute the work among different relatives of his okay so he can distribute the entire work with different relatives so let's say he has four relatives who are very close to him and who are ready to help him in the wedding or in planning of the wedding so what he can do he can assign each and individual chunk of the wedding like decoration music and entertainment to one of his relative and what he can do he can ask that relative to take care of that entire chunk so let's say for decoration he is allocating this relative for music and entertainment he is allocating this woman for guest he is allocating another relative and for food and drink he is allocating another relative so these four people are going to take care of the different department so this lady on the top wearing white sari she will be taking care of the decoration 
lady on the right will be going to take care of the music and entertainment and two boys on the bottom are going to take care of the guests and food and drinks. Now, in this case, it is going to be easy for the organizer. Whenever he will want to do anything related to the decoration, what he will do? He will just call the lady on the left. Whenever he will want to call, do anything related to the music and entertainment, he will just call lady on the right. And whenever he will have to do anything or whenever he has any query related to food and drink or guests, he will just call boys at the bottom, right? So it's going to be very easy for him. So what we are doing here, we have a big program, we have a big ceremony, we are distributing that big ceremony into small chunks and we are allocating each and every small chunk to different relative. Whenever we have to execute any task related to that chunk, we are calling that particular relative and in this way only the functions works inside programming. So we have a big program. And if we keep on writing the entire big program in our main function, which is our organizer in this case. So if we keep on writing our entire program in our main function, then it's going to be mess. It's going to be a trouble. Okay. And it may create confusion to the programmers. So that's why what we do, we distribute our big program into smaller chunks. And then we take help of different helper functions and we allocate that particular chunk or that particular logic to that particular function and whenever we need that logic or whenever we want to execute that particular piece of code we call that function we directly call that function and that function will do the entire stuff for us and it will give us the results right so it's quite easy what it will do it will break our big program into smaller chunks and whenever we need to execute any smaller chunk we can directly call that helper function and that helper function will do that particular action for us. So in this way, functions works in C++ or functions works in any programming language. Now, in C++, we can have two different types of function. So the first type of function is called as user defined function and the second type of function is called as library function. Now let me quickly tell you what is going to be different in user defined function and library function with the help of same example. Now let's say for the same ceremony the organizer is taking help of these four people. Now these four people are not trained people they are just his relative. So they don't even have experience of decoration music and all that. They are just his relative and they are just willing to help him. So what he has to do in this case as his relative are not expert, he will have to guide them. He will have to define how to do all the stuff. So such kind of functions are called as user defined function where the user has to define what the function is going to do or what is going to be the body of the function. So such functions are going to be called as user defined function. So from the programmer's point of view, whenever a programmer wants or whenever a programmer needs to define a function, or he needs to write the logic for the function, such functions are called as user defined function. Now, this organizer can play a bit smart. What he can do, instead of allocating these chunks to his relative, what he can do, he can hire an agency. He can hire a wedding planners agency. So, if he hires a wedding planners agency, so in that case, the wedding planner agency person who is going to deal with the decoration will already have an idea about the decoration. So as an organizer, he don't have to tell the agency what to do from where to buy flowers. He don't have to tell anything. He will just call the agency person and that agency person will do the stuff. So such type of functions are called as library functions. So library functions are predefined functions available in C++ and we can directly call them we don't need to write their logic we don't need to write their body because they are predefined their code already exists c++ guys who have created c++ language have already defined them and that's why we can directly call them and they will do action for us so if you are coming to this module by watching the previous modules looping statements so in that we have seen a rand function rand function r a n d function 
so that function is responsible for returning us a random number between 0 to positive infinity right so we have seen we have used this function so this function is a library function because we haven't returned single line of that function we directly consume that function in our code so such type of functions are called as library function so from our example perspective if the helper functions are going to be our relatives then they are user defined function because we have to define entire uh, stuff to them because we have to tell them from where to bring flowers from where to get food from where to buy drinks and all that stuff but if we are hiring an agency an external agency who will having an experience in this field then we just have to call them we don't need to define them anything because they are specialized in this so such functions are library functions so i hope you got the idea basic high level idea about what are the functions and why exactly we need functions in c++ so in the next video we are going to discuss about functions in much more detail